Welcome back. Joining us now is psychologist Beverly Court. Hi there, Beverly. Hi. Thanks for uh, coming on the show today. We have this wonderful uh, uh, profile, Ruth Jones, who's doing her level best to live a very rich and full life. She's uh, an amazing tapestry artist. She's uh, uh, teaching yoga. She's doing a, a, a Reiki. Um, and yet, all of this goes on while she's caring for aging parents. She's got uh, a, a daughter who's coming up through the ranks, a young adult now, and still trying to support her. She's got a husband that she's wanting to have a full and rich relationship with. How does she do it all? Is there a magic formula for balancing all of this and doing it well? Well, I don't know if this is magic, but <laughs> I do have um, something I work with people that are experiencing these kinds of difficulties. and. What we try and do is we try and look at what your current job description is. Like if you were going to be hired for this job, what were all the, what were all the things that you would say that you were doing in order to accomplish this task in your life? And we write down all the different things that you are doing, what you expect to do, what the expectations of the job are, and we look to see how realistic it is. And, of course, it's never realistic. I wouldn't even, many of us, I don't think, would think of calling this a job. It's just something that's part of your life and you've got to do. So already there's a bit of a relief in that you say, wait, there are parameters here. Mm -hmm. Take a look at them. Yeah. Okay, um, so you realize the list is insane, and then what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and, then you look at, uh, and then you look at talking to the person about what would be a realistic job description in this case. So can you provide a more specific example of how that might work in terms of parceling out the various tasks and the job that you've said, yes, I can do this. Well, usually the job that the person is doing probably takes about three to four people to do. And they realize that when they see it on the piece of paper. So then we look at, okay, what is reasonable for them, the person, to do? So you look at, okay, that's something that I can reasonably do. And look at all these other things that I can't do. I can't be there every single day. I can't always be there to do all their grocery shopping and there's things that I can't do where is there in the community that might be able to help me who have I not asked in the family that might be able to help me because one of the things that I find is which is common for lots of women is they don't ask for help and help there is help there's more help than you need there may be not as much as you need but there's definitely more help than people assume that there is but I think ask for help, okay, that means more money, I can't do that. It doesn't that. always mean more money because sometimes there's people in your community, whether it's through volunteer agencies, sometimes people have connections to churches, to synagogues, to mosques, to even next door neighbors. I sort of would call it a community of caring that you might create for your parents. And if you look at it that way, that it's kind of part of your job is to commit create this community, you spend some time being more long-term oriented rather than constantly in survival mode. And, and how do siblings who aren't in the same community as the, the other siblings that are doing the bulk of the work, uh, how do they handle the guilt factor? Well, I think one of the important things to remember is the siblings that are away is what they can do to be helpful to the siblings that are there. And sometimes it can be you, you say, I'm going to come, and I'm going to come for the weekend, and why don't you guys go away for the weekend? Or giving them dinners out, or just letting them know how much you appreciate what it is that they do. And also to come in with respect and not jump in as the expert and try and do a million things. Ask your sibling, how are they doing? What do they need help with? And work collaboratively with them. So think it through, cut yourself some slack, do what you can, and then say, that's the best. The best, and be able to deal with the fact that it's the best that you can do. Even if you could do more, we still always have to be able to say to ourselves, it's the best that I can do, and it'd be great in another world if I could do a million other things, but I just have to be comfortable with who I am. And that's sometimes just your internal mechanisms that have nothing <laughs> to do with the external. That's comforting guidance. Thank you, Beverly Court, so much. North of 49, a guide to the rest of your life.